Hello there. Thank you for keeping us company. This is Y254. Discussion Monday kicks off right now. We are talking about Kenya's preparedness in disaster management and we are focusing on coronavirus that has been uh, said summer we have allegations that it could be in Kenya but authorities say it is not here. And also we have uh, the locust invasion where we had even a reshuffle in the cabinet hoping uh, the CS Peter Munya will bring a change but still things are not happening. So as a nation are we ready for any disaster that comes in? I'm speaking to Judy Wamaitha, He's, she's a policy and governance person, and Anita Kirote, governance consultant. So I have the best people to speak about Kenya's preparedness in regards to crises and calamities. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. I must admit this is the first time I'm having ladies in my show, as in without a gentleman other than myself. <laughs> so it's an honor to have you here. Now, I'll begin right with what we've had in the last week. We had some memes trending, and uh, this was because a plane was seen landing K uh, JKIA, and actually the person who, who, who took that video, somehow he was suspended. But now, uh, let's not focus on the employability thing, but the fact that that plane came, Kenyans, we are good in tweeting. We are good in creating scenarios. We are good in making things trend. And people are saying uh, Kenya is playing with coronavirus and there were scenarios, there were analogies of how we are playing with corona. But anyway, the truth of the matter, are we ready for coronavirus because we are told these ma masks are, are expensive? Do we even have those masks in our country? And those people are out there. I'll begin with you, Anita. According to me, I know like the public opinion does not think uh, we are prepared for the coronavirus, as I've also seen on Twitter and social media. Uh, but to be honest, if you look at the statement by the government uh, spokes, we are actually doing something about it by uh, Colonel Retired Oguna. And uh, uh, for example, uh, the matters you're raising as it regards to dis disaster prepa uh, preparedness in this country, we should not th note that this is not an isolated, it's not a Kenyan issue. All these are international matters. Coronavirus is an international matter. We've seen it in Italy. You've just read uh, New York has gotten um, one hit. So this is a, 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 an international affair. Even the... Um, WHO is looking into it and finding ways in which it can um, handle it. When it comes to also matters of, um, you, you mentioned um, coronavirus, even the desert locust, I know we'll be talking about that. Mm -hmm. All these are, we are not dealing it in, uh, in isolation. We have the, we've even formed a multi-agency tax force to look into the coronavirus. Uh, Kenya actually has 5,000 uh, mask, pr uh, protective masks. And um, even if you go to JKIA right now and you see some uh, maybe Uber drivers, because when we get, um, we get guests, mm -hmm. uh, foreign guests they're using the protective gears uh, as for us to halt the flights uh, i know it's uh, not the most popular opinion but we cannot just uh, halt halt uh, flights because these are matters of foreign affairs and i know you saw in the dailies when the four css were put on the forefront because what it means is most nations when you look at international relations affairs anything uh, we do to china they will also retaliate and you need to look at more than just um, health affairs you need to look at we are indebted to china exactly. you need to look mm -hmm. yes we are heavily indebted. <laughs> yes we are indebted to uh to kenya and you know whoever pays your bills sometimes you must tow the line oh. so i don't know if judy has a similar opinion mm -hmm. or uh, otherwise so judy this is a scenario there is coronavirus and like she has alluded it's not an isolated case we are part of and considering we have kenyans who are still stuck there and i remember when uh retired uh, Sero Zoguno was saying we would rather have them there because they are not infected yet but when they come out we risk them one of them might and now coming back to kenya if one of them gets the virus that would mean we have a case here so do you think kenya is prepared for this uh, actually with all these deaths uh, we can't compare ourselves with the u.s they have money. Do we have as such? Um, I don't think we are prepared. Because I look at um, 
they have what 11 beds 11 isolation beds to handle coronavirus cases uh, well with the current Kenyan population I don't think um, 11 beds is sufficient enough I don't think we are prepared but even then I also don't think the situation is as bad as we want as Kenyans are trying to make it look online mm -hmm. because um, basically we have other epidemics that kill more sorry to say so but um, in terms of preparedness, we, we may not be at the level where China is or where the U.S. is, mm -hmm. but we are not immune. Which means, uh, even if we close, uh, we, if we, even if we shut down flights, remember like the case in Nigeria was from an Italian. Mm -hmm. So we are closing, uh, we, we are shutting down flights from China. But then again, we are not considering that a lot of uh, people who come to Nairobi come through Bole. Mm -hmm. Or a lot of people that come to Nairobi are from Amsterdam. So uh, really, it, it shouldn't be more around us shutting out borders or, or shutting out people or shutting out the world. It should be us looking at how best do we collaborate, you know, with the with with the with the with the other countries. We have a task force. How best do we work with what is known? How best do we move forward? Even then, how do we how do we put systems in place that uh, put us at a better uh, prepared level. Mm -hmm. How how do we work with what we have, with the knowledge we have, to actually get us moving? Because we cannot shut down our country. Yeah, Ultimately, if you walk in town and and, and most of the shops are, are suffering from this, you want to buy stuff, but they're telling you we don't have stock because we are not going, we are not getting stock. So everybody is sort of afraid, and it's it's becoming an effect. It's becoming um, a round effect on the economy. Sure. So we cannot shut ourselves out to the world, but we need to be better prepared than we are. All right. Now, uh, Anita, you just mentioned of uh, foreign affairs and uh, the ties that we have. There, there, there was another meme that was going round. Uh, we know we owe you. Uh, please don't still come to us, you know, we know we owe you. But also, uh, there's this fact. Mm -hmm. They were saying we stop uh, discriminating the Asian guys, them that are here. Do you think as a nation we have lacked manners that we've gotten to a point of now we can we can have, okay, we are not being racist, racist, but now we are treating them like uh, you people have the virus. So uh, how should we be carrying ourselves as we speak? Um, I believe, um, I even watched an interview in one of the TV shows whereby someone who's been here for more than five years since high school um, a Chinese. And I also saw uh, um, an incident whereby a South Korean was technically Malindi, he was being considered like, because you know, some mm -hmm. people look at the biological, maybe small eyes, these characteristics, so some people think South Koreans are Chinese. Mm -hmm. And he was actually put aside, tests were done, and he was almost being quarantined. Mm -hmm. um, however, after a few hours, he was able uh, to get out. I think as a Kenya, we are one of the most welcoming uh, nations. It's why uh, our tourism has always been like uh, skyrocketing when you go to the likes of Diani, one of the best uh, beaches. Mm -hmm. We are actually a tourist hub and even I can give examples of expatriates, foreign diplomats who've come um, to do different things, the likes of uh, Lei, uh, former GM, and these are the likes of former um, um, RIP, Bob Collimo, the, li the likes of foreigners who've actually made a home out of this country. And because of our relations with Chinese, it's expected that even more Kenyans, there are a lot of Kenyans, that's why we had over 100 students in Wuhan. And uh, we expect, even though they are in quarantine and maybe they cannot come back home because as Oguna said, uh, transporting them or removing someone from Kasarani or Ruisambo and taking them to JKI may expose them to coronavirus. So I believe where they are, they are getting food. I know the government of Kenya has intervened by giving them. At first, they were given one million. Now I've seen they've been given ten million. Mm. But I believe still the Chinese government is taking care of them, providing food in these areas that have been quarantined. So I believe uh, the Chinese who should be here should also, because I believe there is due process. They they they, they were checked in. Um, Kenyatta National Hospital and who WHO itself has recommended self-quarantine for 14 days mm -hmm. and they actually uh, are doing that because they're also ex uh, um, they have a feeling of phobia when they're interacting with Kenyans so obviously them themselves have quarantined and you can even map out you're seeing people from the areas of Mombasa Road, Athi River, Sukimau they're saying mm -hmm. these people are our neighbors and 
In fact, the day the 216 uh, passengers from the um, China South Airlines landed, mm -hmm. people were saying, I know exactly where they are. So they are even in, in one place. It's not like they are distributed. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, I believe that is good enough. We are not a country that has... Um, has had a history of xenophobia like our counterparts in South Africa or a country of racism or any form of uh, discrimination. Even the Chinese themselves, uh, when they are inviting the, the foreigners, the Chinese who've been out outside uh, Kenya, mm -hmm. they are also being quarantined, they are also wearing masks, even in birthday parties. I know you saw that video in a, in a birthday party. So for me, mm -hmm. um, I believe they are taking the necessary precautions and they are not going around they themselves are quarantining themselves. Otherwise, uh, CBD, you would be seeing every, everyone mm, in true, CBD. True. Yes. Like actually, we, in Nairobi, we are so populated, and I don't know what would happen if such a case would happen here. But now, uh, I want us now to move to the other interesting issue. We had uh, <laughs> CS Kyunjuri being hosted from uh, the cabinet because he was unable to handle some of the staff. Uh, in, from Maze and now the uh, locusts that had, had just inv uh, invaded Kenya. But now, Peter Munya was coming in. And uh, when he came in, uh, a lot of people said, now we have someone. And I remember having a discussion here, and one of the panelists was telling me, Munya will not do anything. Because he has been industrialization, and we can't count a good number of youths who have been employed. But now he's coming to agriculture. What difference will he make? And I remember another joke that came in, he said, uh, these locusts are now turning yellow, so they are dying, uh, which is not true. So is CS Munya doing enough from where you sit at Judy? The good CS is trying, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But then, um, again, he ought to try harder. He ought to come with, um, I think, scientifically and statistically backed strategies to, 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 to actually combat the locusts. Because as it sits, we are a country whose um, food security is threatened. And he needs to treat the issue with the seriousness it deserves. Because basically, if you, if you look at uh, where we are, it's, uh, we are almost going, in, going into the long range. And it doesn't sound like there's an actual strategy to actually combat the locusts. Um, I think, in my opinion, it was a very careless statement for the CS to say the locusts are old. I expected he would um, actually utilize um, professionals within the field, entomologists. I mean, in Kenya, we have all this. Mm -hmm. He would sit down with them and understand and come up with a very good way of, um, of resolving the issue. But uh, you see, you can't play politics with people's livelihoods. You can't play politics with the food security of our country. And um, for, for CS Munya, he actually needs to sit down. I don't know whether it needs to be Isipe, entomologist. He needs to understand the life cycle of the locusts and also understand what's the best intervention point do we do the intervention when the locusts are still like eggs or when they are nymphs or at what point? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, unless we do that, it's going to be an issue. It's going to be hectic. It's going to be bad. Sure. Yeah. All right. Anita, we're speaking of the Big Four agenda, mm -hmm. and food, food security is one of them. And as we speak, at the northern part of the country, they're already crying. We, it, the locust came, and now they're in Western. Uh, okay, I'm sure some <laughs> of the people are enjoying this, but also they are not. Uh, oblivious of what would happen later because the locusts are here and I don't know whether the rains will, will affect them. I don't know how it will uh, catalyze their maturity or their livelihood. But now, is, was it a miss or a hit? Um, for me, the comments by uh, CS Munya were totally out of line uh, because it's very good. Uh, like like uh, Judy has said, you look at your predecessor. These are the same statements that brought um, 
us to question the competencies of CSK on jury and asking, does this guy mm -hmm. know what he's doing? Uh, but when you look at CS Munya, you can actually see he has a trade record. Um, for your panelist, I wish you please go and ask him what he means by creation of jobs and the Ministry of Industrialization, mm -hmm. whether he has the statist statistics, because really what is the measurement of um, a good CS in terms of trade and industrialization? Remember, it's under uh, CS Munya that we've had the F AFC TA uh, agreement whereby we want to bring uh, all the African countries mm -hmm. under one arm um, when he was under. So he's a, he has a very stellar career, especially in um, EAC, East Africa Affairs, mm -hmm. and also uh, trade. Mm -hmm. So I believe he has the Midas touch. The only problem he has is sometimes these reckless statements can uh, bring you trouble and make you sure. uh, question. Uh, question your, your competency. So as Judea said, we actually have ISIPE, we have uh, the likes of KEFIS, we have all these uh, very good um, agricultural institutions even that focus especially on uh, research. So I believe they're the ones who should make a statement or write something to him so that he avoids uh, putting himself in very awkward situations. Now, know that you, you people agree on one thing, he, ma he has made a reckless statement and you have mentioned of these organizations that are out here. Does it mean they have not approached him or they talk? Do, do they meet these people? Do they meet? Um, I would believe they meet because once you form a multi-agency task force, mm -hmm. uh, that's what it's supposed to do because any multi-agency uh, task force has representation from uh, different quarters. Mm -hmm. So I believe the challenge is we might agree, even before the, the station aired, you might have said you cannot mention A, B, C, D, but you might be on air and you, you're all of a sudden I start mentioning things you know that I'm not supposed to mention. Mm -hmm. So I believe it's a matter of being exposed to air and sometimes you usually lose the plot. Mm -hmm. So the spring is not working. It should work with the organization that are in place. But now uh, we had some farmers saying now this thing should be declared uh, a crisis already. But now, uh, we haven't seen that. We haven't seen that. And I don't know what will be the next move. And apparently, we are out of time. So I'm getting your quick comments, as your recommendations as we wind up, Judy. Um, one thing we acknowledge is CS Munya inherited um, a lot of incompetence around the way the locust issues was handled. Mm -hmm. So when he came in, we expected a lot out of him. I don't know, we expected maybe magic, like dude will come and poof, locusts are gone. But it doesn't work like that. So basically, he, he just needs to sit with the technocrats, with the people who understand. And um, also considering the fact that this is not a Kenyan thing, it's not, the, the locusts are not just in Kenya. They started all the way in Yemen. So what are the, what are the peers doing? Again, um, I believe ICP will be very helpful. Uh, above ICP, we have research institutions, we have our universities with the various uh, specialists in, in entomology. So he needs to understand where does he need to target best from. Mm -hmm. Then what's the most effective and efficient way? Because we've seen, uh, we've seen counties spring. Well, one, he also needs to, for one, he also needs to work with the county governments. Because uh, ultimately, for easier implementation of his strategies, he needs to work very closely with the, with the affected counties. Mm -hmm. But um, he needs to acknowledge that um, he has to work with the help of specialists and um, get politics out of handling the whole issue. Mm -hmm. You know, like, just sit back, handle it, and get it done. Then we can do politics later. All right, just a follow-up on, on you, because uh, you kind of say he's, he's, he's the good man in office. We have an issue. I want us to digress. Dogo too, on your part, he, he he has to deal with the maze problem with the people down there. Is this something he will be able to handle? Because many people say they are cartels. The truth is, they are cartels. Mm -hmm. And he's, is he the best man for that? Well, I believe when the president gave him the job, he knew he was the best man. All right, Anita. Your recommendations? Um, for me, I'll begin with the maze scandal, the maze issues. Mm -hmm. I don't think he'll still be able uh, to handle that because uh, there are a lot of loose ends and it's not from now, it's since 2007. The scandals with the National Serious and Produce Board, they are, like all the bodies in the agricultural sector actually needs 
needs like a complete institutional reform. Um, otherwise, even um, first of all, we have the threat of locusts. Then number two, uh, maize, especially from from the likes of Rift Valley and the likes Kinamze Kibor are seriously <laughs> complaining that when they take maize to NCPB, mm -hmm. the NCP National Cereals and Produce Board, they say that their stock are full. Mm -hmm. Then when you go and check, the maize that will come out to the market has a flotoxin. I mean, it is um, it's not gonna be a walk in the park. So I would not be. Um, optimistic about that, not to mention their cartels who want to import maize from Mexico and who knows where. Mm -hmm. So they're always creating that in, uh, in inhibiting environment. Then we even have issues of uh, pest control. Yet we have a pest and controls board okay. uh, that should limit how much uh, pesticides we use on our crops and it's not happening, meaning some of this maize is not fit for human consumption. Mm -hmm. So for me it's a, a whole chain. Munya should sit down with all these agencies because they are there and they are actually competent as um, Judy has alluded to, they, they are just not being consulted or being um, utilized. Um, as for the matter of desert uh, locust, I, I already mentioned again it's an international matter and they are coming from Yemen, they are uh, traveling down. Uh, no one has yet, the experts have not told us the impact of the rain that we've started experiencing uh, this much, um, as you said, on how, how, how it will affect because uh, if uh, in a layman, I am not an expert, I'm a political uh, person. I don't know if the beginning of the word desert locust, and now that is raining, if, if it really implies that now that is raining, that issue is, um, is gone. So we will wait for Colonel uh, Oguna to give us a statement on Thursday, and uh, we shall know the way forward. All right, and the coronavirus, we said we're good. For me, I say we are right on track. All right, so Kenyans, the governance here are saying we might be safe, but also take care of yourself. Now, coming up next is Owai Mashariki. They have been my guest, Anita and Kirote, governance consultant. And uh, Judy, well, my, uh, thank you so much for coming. It's your first time. I'm hoping I'll be seeing you more, more <laughs> here. Thank you so much for coming. Keep it uh, Y254 TV. Uh, like I've said, Owai Mashariki is coming up next with DJ TSK and Kendrell Bisa. I'll be seeing you again very soon. My name is Adira Vahila. You have yourself a very good night and a prosperous week ahead.